Hello, I'm Mr. Franklin, and welcome to Conceptual Physics. Remember that as we go along, you can always pause the video, rewind, if you need to go back and review something. Also, don't forget that if you're still learning English, you can also click on the uh, settings on YouTube and turn on the closed cap captioning, and you can actually see the printed words of what I'm saying as we go along. So. Let's jump into today's lesson. Today we're going to be talking about gravity, weight, and mass. Okay, now first thing we're going to look at is let's talk about gravity. The problem with gravity that most of us encounter when we, when we start to really study it is our existence, our life is we've always known gravity. And so what it really is and how it works can often be confused with what we think it does. So let's let's jump into this a little bit. So gravity was defined by Sir Isaac Newton. So this is going to be Newton's definition of gravity. And what he said is gravity is the attractive force between any object with mass. So this is also the definition for weight. So Weight is the attractive force between any objects with mass. It's just that when we're on the Earth, the Earth has mass, I have mass, but the Earth's mass is so strong that I'm stuck to the, uh, the Earth's surface. If I hold out my marker, it has mass, and if I let go, gravity pulls it to the ground, but it doesn't pull it to me. Why? Because the Earth's mass is so huge, the, the weight of the object is really defined by the mass of the Earth. So we're gonna get into that some more, but what you really need to say is what Newton described was not necessarily what gravity actually is, but more of what is the magnitude of that force, okay? He said it's the attractive force between any objects with mass. Well, a couple of centuries later, Einstein comes along and tells us a little bit better what gravity is. So what he said was space and time are made out of a single fabric. So if we imagine space and time, all of existence is like a blanket. So I take a blanket, okay? And this fabric is distorted by objects with mass. So I'm gonna take the sun and I'm gonna put it on my blanket and it's going to distort or cause the fabric to bend. So much like you can imagine taking this bowling ball and I set it on a blanket, it's going to cause the blanket to bend in the middle, okay? So an object with mass is going to cause this bending. Now, weight, or the force of gravity, is going to be experienced when another object encounters this distortion. The result is going to be the force we call gravity. So if I take the Earth, so we're going to take the Earth here, and I'm going to set it also on this fabric. Well, it, it could roll towards the sun and fall into the hole created by the sun, but the Earth is also moving, and so it basically wraps around in 3D, but it's caught by this hole that the sun is creating, or this bending, this, uh, it's almost like a pothole, okay? And the planets get trapped around the sun because of this folding of space, okay? So we're gonna focus mostly on this definition. We're gonna kinda keep it simple but we need to understand that all this really does is tell us what the size of this force is gonna be. Okay, so with all of this, this, I keep bringing up the word mass, and there's generally two definitions that people like to use when we talk about mass. The first one is we will say that mass is the amount of stuff in an object. That's kind of a chemistry definition and it's a simple definition. So 
So if I look at the bowling ball, for example, if I went and started counting what was in it, i.e. I could count the number of atoms, but atoms are made out of things, protons, neutrons, and electrons, I could count all of those pieces, and in doing so, it would tell me basically what the mass is. Now, that's a chemistry, that's how a lot of people in chemistry tend to think about it. In physics, it's a subtler definition, but it's probably more accurate. What we want to think about with mass is it is the measure of inertia. Now, as we understand inertia better, as we grow in our understanding of what inertia really is, it'll make more sense that, that that's a true definition. But when we did our lab with the cart and we set the weights on it, as we added more weights and we used the same force to push it, it wound up accelerating at a slower rate. It was harder to push. So it had more stuff, it had more inertia, in other words, it had more mass. Okay, so both of these definitions are good to, to conceptually grab a hold of what mass really is. Okay? What's most important though is mass and weight are not the same thing. Okay? This is hard to understand because most of the time when I give you a mass, you only experience that mass on the earth. And so it always has a set weight to it. But the heaviness of the weight that I give you, okay, that is the weight. The actual mass of it is a different number altogether. Okay, so let's, we're going to jump into the, in the next section here. We're going to talk about Newton's actual equation and how did he say this.